Are you okay? I'm pretty sure the guy in that truck's following me. He's road raging. Why don't you just chill, man? Go your own way. I don't think you really know what a bad day is. But you're gonna find out. Derek, Hello. how are you? Great, how's it going? I'm doing good. Good. Thanks so much for being able to jump on. I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad we're able to do this. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that I've got a, you know, kind of a tight, tight schedule today and tomorrow, but happy I to understand. do it. This is the, the day before the release and a day of. It's, it's always hectic, you know? So Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad I reached out. I saw a colleague of mine interview on Facebook. I'm like, well, let me <laughs> take a shot. And no, see. Thanks. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, I'm really excited about the film. Uh, it's been kind of a long time coming, you know, the talk of is it going to play in the movies? It seemed like it was always destined to be a theatrical release and, and we would hear over the months, is it going to get released or pushed back? Tell me about that. Was this always a plan and not to move it to VOD and have this theatrical release for a movie like this? Yeah, I think that the, the thing that, uh, you know, Solstice's mandate is, as a studio is is, you know, uh, films for theatrical release. And I know that over the course of, uh, of, you know, all of this craziness with the dates shifting a bunch of times and everything else, I'm sure they could have sold it, you know, to a streamer uh, a few times over, but they really just wanted to hold out and, and um, you know, and get it in theaters where it's really meant to be seen. Yeah, and it's going to be one of the first releases we've seen since the pandemic, really. And yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, that's cool. That's a reason to kind of want to go back to see something new. Uh, you know, this story, I haven't seen the film, but I mean, looking at trailers and just kind of checking out news on the movie. I've had these kind of incidents. Like I remember living, I mean, I, I'm currently in Chicago, but I was living in LA. I had someone almost once trying to run me off the highway. Like, this is, like, legitimate. This isn't, like, a thing. Like, people get crazy road rage, and for no reason. You just kind of turn into their lane or for whatever reason, and it's on. Did you have any sort of these encounters? Like, it, it's scary when this happens. This happened to me once not too long ago. It was terrifying. Yeah. Did you have any sort of real-life experiences like this? Because these things happen. Road rage is a real thing. And people, you just don't know what ticks them. And you could just be doing your thing, and they'll just find a reason kind of snap. Tell, uh, tell me your kind of relation to, to the story uh, in itself. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of uh, one of the great things about the story is that everyone has some kind of connection, brush with it friend who had a you know experience whatever like everybody has some connection to some road rage experience and i think that's uh you know why it's got such a universal appeal because you know you, you kind of realize just how close to to a horrifying situation you could be on any day yep. just by you know uh by honking your horn at the wrong person and that's the scary part and you know, there's more to it because we can tell there's a lot of going in Russell's character here. There's some behind the things that that's causing this rage because it just doesn't happen, doesn't spawn out of nothing. There's something in your life where that's the tipping point and, and that's where it goes. Um, you've had these kind of characters too, in a sense, in, in American Dreamer. That's another uh, movie that I enjoyed uh, with Jim Gaffigan. You know, you turn these the, these actors so uh, inwardly with, with like their psychological, you know, things that these characters have to deal with. Tell me your kind of interest in like the psychology of kind of the mystery of someone dealing, you know, looking like a routine person on a street, but dealing with inner turmoil, you just don't know what's going to make them tick and what they're going through. I, I always find that fascinating, the, the layers that a character has that it could really be anyone on a street we walk past by, but you do not know what's going on inside of them. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I think I tend to gravitate towards, um, towards stories that, that, that involve people maybe dealing with, um, you know, questions of, of, of morality or, or, you know, uh, their actions and, and, or a direction they could take. And, and usually like a personal story that's set against the backdrop of kind of larger societal issues. I think all the way back, back to the Joneses was kind of, mm -hmm. um, you know, a similar, similar, uh, I mean, obviously different kind of film, but still, I think I try to, I just gravitate towards, 
towards that. And, um, you know, unhinged is no different. I mean, I think that it's a, it's a, uh, you know, very, uh, the scope is very small in, in on un, with unhinged with this one day in the life of these few people. Uh, however, it does, it does have, uh, let's say, you know, it touches on larger societal issues that, uh, you know, are, are of the moment. Yeah. And that's the scary and kind of realistic part of, of the world we live in, you know, with all that's going on, you just don't sometimes know what's going through people's minds, you know, and it's a scary thought, you know, because we're crossing paths constantly, you know, with people on a daily basis and we never kind of think about, Oh, you know, how is there maybe like a thank you or a hello can really change their day, you know, in so many ways, you know, and stop them from doing something tragic. And so it's just a fascinating look at it. Tell me Russell's involvement. Was this always kind of your number one plan, number one choice? Because I mean, he's terrific with anything, but especially seeing him in this role really go to the max in so many ways with his emotions and range he's showing. Um, was this your kind of a top choice all along? Because to have an actor with that caliber, you can just let him fly with, with the character. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was kind of, um, you know, uh, he was the wish list, you know, he was mm -hmm. the perfect perfect person to play this role and, and um you know when you make that list and you've got the, that name at the very top that's your that is your perfect uh you know casting situation you never know what's going to happen i mean most of the time it probably doesn't happen but it just happened to click with him and and uh you know he and i had good chemistry and and you know uh he brought a lot to the table he had a lot of insight into the character we did a lot of work together to try to find the character and and um you know it, it it does make my job a lot easier to, to sit back and, and watch someone like Russell work, though. That's for sure. Yeah, and, you know, you think about it, with someone else being cast, that could kind of be a little bit of a different movie, too. You know, Russell brings this particular, I mean, energy. You can just tell just watching clips of it. And just he brings all of himself. But with another actor, it might go a different way. So that's that's a fine line there, too. Yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, I've heard – it's kind of a, of an interesting thing to think about uh, that you could apply to almost any film, you know, yeah. I like once you've seen a film with an actor uh, in a role, it's hard to really picture anyone else in that role, you mm -hmm. know? So, uh, but you're right. I mean, he really, uh, he goes there and, and, you know, it's great to see him getting um, uh, recognized and people saying it's his best role since the insider and things like that. It's really great that, that, that everything he put into this, you know, people are recognizing it and, and, and you know, uh, giving him a, a, you know, shout out for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always curious as a filmmaker, because I feel like creating a, a thriller with, with constant tension and, and intensity, it must be difficult because you need to keep the audience always captivated, always on the edge of your seat. How do you kind of approach as a filmmaker delivering constant tension and mystery in a movie like this, where you just can't escape, you know, you can't go take a bathroom break. You can't go take a concession because you need to be part of it. How do you build this sort of uh, tension in a thrill like this? Cause you just don't know what's going to happen. You need to stay for every moment. Is it difficult for a filmmaker to kind of build that? I mean, I think that, um, y you know, it's interesting because when you're first cutting the film, you know, any film, you're, you're, you're so in it, you're so in each scene. And then when, when you play it down for the first time as a, as a whole, you know, you, you, you see, you know, the pacing and you see kind of where you need to speed things up, where you need to slow things down, where, you know, where people might just need a breath. And, you know, I just think it's part of the finishing process. And thankfully, you know, uh, we have a great team. We have, we had great editors on this and, and, um, you know, it's a constant uh, uh, tweaking until the very end because, yep. you know, there's always something that you would, you know, tweak a little bit and you sort of have that finish line that, that you know, you, you have to have it finished by this certain point. And, you know, so it's re it really is tweaking frames until that, that final day that you can't touch it anymore. And, and, and you hope that you have worked the pace out in some way that works. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have like kind of second thoughts? Like, I wish I did this. I mean, seems like you're kind of involved with the editing process. Obviously, you know, 
aside from the editors, just obviously selecting the, the flow of the movie, because the movie doesn't happen without editing. You know, it's such a key component. Um, how oftentimes you kind of, you just let it go once a deadline and kind of like, this is it, I'm not gonna go back to it. Or you kind of always have maybe sometimes second thoughts, I wish I added this or maybe took this out. How do you kind of approach that? Because it could drive you crazy, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, look, I could, I could go back to every single film, you know, dating back to, to, you know, the Joneses 12 years ago or so. And I could probably tell you three or four edits I, I, I would like to make right now on them. So, you know, I just think that's just goes with the territory when the clock is ticking, you have a deadline and, and, and at some point you, you turn the film over and, you know, then you get some distance on it and you watch it again. And, you know, there's a couple tweaks that you, you know, you might like to make on it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just part of the nature of the job in itself, yeah, you know, yeah. being a filmmaker, it's not just behind the lens, there's so much more to it, you know, and the aspects of it. Um, is there anything on this film that you maybe took away that you faced for a first time, or maybe in a sense learned or anything that kind of was maybe an aha moment for you while working on this film, either on set or off set? I mean, I think the biggest thing is just, um, if anyone ever tries to convince me to go to New Orleans during hurricane season to shoot a road film again, oh, man. I will probably say no because of the environmental issues we dealt with. I mean, we got, we got hit with a hurricane uh, that pushed our production. We got, you know, uh, every single afternoon was, was uh, you know, lightning delays for sometimes up to three hours or so. Um, you know, the heat index was crazy up over 105 every day. And you couldn't, some days you couldn't drink enough water to stay hydrated. So I think that, you know, that's the biggest thing is just, uh, I love New Orleans. I love the crew there. I'd love to go back and shoot a film, just not during, during, you know, July and August. That makes sense. You see, that's the kind of the things that you have no control over. The crew, no one has control over best to face. You know, that's a difficulty of the filmmaker. Like, yeah, you can have everything set up, but then nature just calls its own, you know, Absolutely. direction and affects it. Wow, that's that's a fascinating aspect of it. Uh, what sort of, I mean, I've seen your films and there's obviously we've talked about kind of elements of of, of these characters and the inner turmoils. What sort of films and characters are you drawn to? Is there something particular that you, you always like to bring in your work, an element that you want to include? Um, I mean, I, I just think it starts with the script and, and, and you know, um, it's easy to take a good script and make a bad movie. M much you know, but at the same time, I don't think you can make a good movie out of a bad script. So you kind of have to start with the script and, 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 you know, get it where it needs to be before you start shooting. And so I think for me, it's not about genre. It's not about certain stories. It's just about like, you know, how does the script read? You know, does it, is it something that I say, I have to make this movie? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's, that's, I read a lot of scripts, uh, you know, looking at a lot of IP right now, a lot of books as well. And, you know, uh, it's hard to find something that you, that you, that you, you know, are going to commit years of your life to, you know, so, but it just, I couldn't predict what it's going to be in terms of, 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 of setting up anything ahead of time in terms of qualifications or, or details. It's just about when you read the right thing, you know, it. Mm -hmm. And you think the current state with the pandemic, how, how the industry has been kind of really slowed down and, and on hiatus, you think things are going to change? Um, I mean, in a sense, going forward, once even we kind of have things back to production and flow, do you foresee kind of personally a new maybe method or ways you might have to adjust to or, or work on? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, you find a way. I mean, mm -hmm. like, for instance, in delivering Unhinged, you know, uh, we had to finish it virtually. I was based in Virginia and had a, uh, a real time set up in my screening room where I was working with my composer in Spain and editorial and wow. sound in, 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 in LA and virtual uh, and visual effects in, uh, in Vancouver and actors in Australia. And, you know, we, I like to be in the room with it, these people when I'm finishing a film, but I couldn't be. And, you know, we learned that you can do it. You can do it virtually. Mm -hmm. now, I wouldn't want to do it again, but, you know, if, if I have to, I can. And I think that, you know, uh, on the production side, you know, we'll find a way, we'll find, find something that allows us to, to, to create, uh, and, and be safe at the same time. So I, you know, I don't know what it's going to be, but, but I know there are a lot of people, uh, that are, that are, that exist on a, on a much higher pay grade than I do that are trying to figure that out right now. And, 
and they will. Yeah. It's all about adjustment. We made this happen. You know, instead of a regular red carpet, we're kind of doing this, you know, yeah. it, it, you find ways to do it. Wanted to finally ask you, um, what are some things I always like to ask directors and actors, like obviously besides the work, you have a personal life and things you like to do. What sort of hobbies or interests do you have outside of obviously filmmaking and things you like to do kind of to clear your head or, or just get away to? Wow, that, you know, in doing press for the, for, for the film here, I've probably done, you know, 100 interviews, and that's the wow. first time I've been asked that. So um, uh, what do I like to do? I mean, I, you know, this lockdown has, has been a great, uh, it's, it's given me a lot of family time, a lot of downtime that I don't normally get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've, I've been able to spend a lot of time with my wife and kids. <laughs> um, you know, whether it's uh, playing football in the front yard with my 10-year-old or going surfing or or I've been able to cook a lot more than I normally do just because I've had the time. So, uh, you know, just, just, uh, pretty boring stuff, you know, I'm, but uh, <laughs> that's the real life stuff. You see, I like that. I would not know that you like to cook and you're anything, any specialties you make that you enjoy or the family likes. I mean, I think that during, during, you know, COVID lockdown, I think I've become the pizza master of the, of my house, you know, and, and, uh, I think I've probably made more pizzas, in the last five months than I have in the last, I don't know, 25 years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, pizza has been a big one. Um, but, uh, you know, when the, when tomatoes are in season, I've been making gazpacho once a week and living off of that. And, uh, um, you know, whatever, whatever strikes me, you know, you never know. So you're kind of a creator too, when it comes to food in a lot of ways too, right? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an eater when it comes to food, but, uh, but I just, you know, need to, need to have something I want to eat. So I've, by necessity, I've had to, had to learn how to cook. That's awesome. You see, you see, that's the one, I guess, positive we can take away from this. It gave us time with family and friends just to connect, you know, you kind of, especially in this industry, you just always flying by the moment, you know, something's yeah, right. next and next. And like this, it gives you time to pause and kind of appreciate the things that, you know, that you might not have the luxury of doing when everything's kind of normal. No doubt. No doubt. Awesome. I really appreciate you taking this time uh, to talk to me. So looking forward to the film. Uh, I've been hearing about it for so long. It's finally here. So it's going to be a cool kind of introduction to a little normalcy. So it, nothing beats a theater experience, no matter what, you know, just going out, seeing things on a big screen and having that two hours of, the, you know, distraction. That's what we kind of need these days, you know, and so yeah, many no ways. Thank you, Derek. Looking forward to you. You have a lot of projects coming up. Looking forward to what's next. Uh, I've been a fan of your work, so it's, it's really cool to catch up with you. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'll spread the word on the movie uh, the best I can. So, All right. Uh, take care. You too. Stay safe and healthy. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I need you to learn how to say you're sorry. And you're going to learn through violence and retribution. Sounds like you're waking up. I'm wide awake. You better bring your A game. You're gonna need it.